3. How strongly the bashful mole returned her gentle master's love. It seems desire is the root of healing and acting, the sacred nourishment of imagination, the simple principle producing the entangled labyrinth of passions. The world in which we live is to such a point interwoven with the phantasms born of our wishes that it must be a puzzle to disentangle reality from dream, good from evil, particularly in case of wishes and opinions clashing, whether our beliefs are more reliable than others. Out confusion can ensue, and with that there comes to me a juicy story, even a bawdy one in its own way. The reader must forgive my impudence. Here it is. Once upon a time, there was a young muleteer who so loved these animals that he flattered himself to divine all their feelings and wishes. For instance, if his beloved she mule, the beautiful and strong mole, stamped once more her hoofs on the ground, well, he thought, she wants that I remove some thorn or a troublesome pebble or simply she wishes I scratch the corn near her hoof. If she seemed to him rather lazy when chewing her hay, he supposed he had certainly to replace the fodder, to caress her neck and to chew one or two morsels with her, so just as to keep her company. What well, then? The young she mule had a predilection for chicory a detail a shrewd master never noticed, and returning every evening to the hamlet, she approached the neighbor's mule carrying big baskets of chicory on his back. Walking by him, Molly sniffed from time to time the precious greens, trying to steal a leaf or two. The muleteer didn't hail to noses and move, but, alas, he was so overconfident to realize at once all her desires that he believed it was undoubtedly for love his bashful she knew went side by side her young fellow. And every evening in the stable, looking at her big, round, moist eyes, they said to suit her sorrow, Oh, my mom! You're in love with Gaelic, our neighbor's mule, and you're suffering, I see. You wish, I understand, to lick his strong rump and taste his male kisses over this fine neck. How oh, you are suffering, my mole, I do see that. But what can I do for you? Well, even if I grieve for it, as I am a bit jealous, you know, I see to that you have him as a husband any time you want. So he said, and so intended. But he was a bit jealous, you know, and day after day put off making arrangements with his neighbor, who had long ago decided to castrate his mule to make him meeker at working. And when the young muleteer finally found the courage to meet his neighbor, it was ultimately too late to make any kind of deal. What could he do now for his tender mole? He shed bitter tears, and so hard he tried to console that he began to kiss and hug his darling more than it is so similar however fond he is of his animals. And believing she was suffering unbearably because of a broken heart, one unlucky evening he decided. But it would be unseemly to go into details of how he disguised himself and what he to behave. In fact, the mule frisked and rushed 
and so well hit the mark that in a flash he found himself in the same condition of the unlucky Kitty. So comes to an end the tragedy of Mon Gidel and the young muleteer, who having mistaken his own wish for his animal's longing, wholly innocently, as it always happens in such a case, wanted to assume the appearance of her supposed beloved to present her with a gift of love. Quite beyond our suspicion, we see that misunderstandings are a more common business than we believe. The point is that because of a certain curious demureness, we play hide and seek with ourselves, a delicate hypocrisy that would require to avoid some nuisances, a more subtle, skillful art. Perhaps a fine alchemy of transmutations and substitutions, as in the following story an old acquaintance told me not so long ago. Mind reader, here you have a second instance of perverted longing for the gain of one's own truth.